Hey, everybody. My name is Cindy Shapiro. I am the composer lyricist of Ani Isnin Unbound, also Psyche First Upon a Time, also Hildegard the Experience, and a few more that are in the queue that I can't talk about quite yet. I thought it might be a fun exercise for me to put on this Incorrigible Entertainment YouTube channel some discussions about the actual um, processes that my partner Janet Rossin and I went through um, in creating these scenes for Unaced and Unbound. I love process. I think it's really fascinating. And I thought you might enjoy that as well. So um, in this particular scene, um, which is the opening scene to Honest and Unbound, um, we are going to meet the character Eternal on the East as played by Holly Sidios. Holly is a very in-demand session singer in Los Angeles. She sings with the LA Master Chorale and she's been doing work with people like John Adams, uh, John Powell, I don't know, maybe, maybe other composers named John. Um, Eternal Ana East is a character that is um, Ana East Nin come back from the dead to defend her life. Um, let me just say, if you have not seen the scene all the way through, my body is mine from start to finish. I will put a link to it in the notes here. And um, I think you should see that first because there's gonna be stopping and starting and me explaining things and you should just have seen the whole thing. Also, hey, this is a scene from the show it's from the uh, Dream Guernica scene. It's the nightmare scene. This is a photograph by Barry Weiss. Um, we don't have the scene up on the um, on the channel because, hey, we're not going to put the whole show up there. You've got to see the show. Um, anyway, this scene is the opening scene, and um, and it, we're gonna we're gonna sort of like set the stage, set the tone, set the world of the show. And the world of the show is that. Eternal Ani Ace has come back from the dead to defend her life. She's going to roll back from the beginning of the story, her story, and tell you her whole tale. And um, I'm going to just roll the scene here. Ani Ace Nin was a famous writer from the 20th century. She's most famous for two things, her diary, Diary of Ani Ace Nin, and her erotica. And we start with a famous we don't see things as they are, we see things as we are. You may have heard that. And here's Holly reading the journal. Uh, you'll notice that we have super titles in French. This was the show that we performed in anywhere. No in English. The year was seventy seven. I died in LA. So Annie Eastman died in LA. I mean, when I first started doing research for this show, I, I was actually surprised. I thought she would have died in New York or Paris, but she died in Los Angeles. And um, in a sense that was fortuitous for my partner, Janet Rossin and me, because we were creating this show in Los Angeles and Nin's entire archive resides at UCLA. And we worked with um, the Anna East Nin Trust they allowed us to go into the archive um, and take photographs of Nin's actual journals. Um, we had specific uh, pages, moments in her life where we wanted to capture those moments, take photographs and project them huge behind the um, performers. For example, the moment where she met Henry Miller was a major moment in Nin's life. I'm singing, singing, singing. I've just met Henry Miller. And we have that projected behind the dancers and, and the singer. Um, and for, for Janet and me, it was this profound moment to actually hold these journals and see these moments personally um, and to see the, the photographs of Miller, the photographs of her husband. Um, and she she lived in, uh, in Silver Lake. Hey, the New York Times was remembering all She was important life. enough to warrant a little obituary in the New York Times. And 
here comes the Los Angeles Times with its obituary. Same day. So, in the New York Times, it said that she was survived by her husband, Hugh Geiler, but in the LA Times, it said she was survived by her husband, Rupert Pohl. And we will get into the details of that in the course of the show. And it's a Dancer on it, he dances out the tail, and singer on it, is singing. This is the beautiful Kate Coleman dancing role. Dancer on it, is. There they are sharing the journal. Papa. What you mean was um, a composer and conductor and well known in his time, actually. Um, and uh, we get into this um, very early origin story trauma with her, um, her separation from Papa. And actually, we, we get into it in, this, in the very next scene, Cold, Cold Night. And here is Min's uh, husband. Beguiler, I should also say Papa here is played by Matthew D'Amico. Matthew, this is his second show with Janet and me. He played um, Hermes in um, Psyche First Upon a Time. And there's Michael Quiet playing the smoldering Henry Miller. Um, and Min definitely had to keep her diaries locked up because um, should anybody have found them, they had very deep secrets. Wonderful Tina Guo on cello. Here come our two uh, women dancing in our ensemble. Jasper and Hinkley, from these woods, they're also beautiful dancers. So in 1995, Nin's been dead almost 20 years at this point. Um, Deirdre Bear uh, publishes a very in-depth biography about Nin and is uh, not very neutral about her feelings about Nin. She is extremely judgmental and finds Nin to be absolutely monstrous. Um, and then what happens is that reviewers who are reviewing this biography also, instead of instead of commenting on the quality of the writing of the biography, turn the um, reviews into a commentary on Nin herself and Nin's life and the way she conducted herself in her lifetime. And it is a thorough trashing of her self, her work, um, the way she the way she lived her life. And what happens is that it's early cancer cancel culture. Um, and her publisher at that at that time pulls all her work 
from their catalog and she disappears from the literary scene. Um, it's a terrible thing. So the conceit here of the show at this moment is, hello audience. Um, everybody thinks I'm a terrible person. Um, and I am going to tell you my whole story. We're going to tell you from the beginning. We're going to uh, not pull any punches. We're going to tell you the ugly truths. And um, you'll decide whether I'm a monster or not. Of course, we use the words naked truth because man is very long. As a erotic writer, too. A lot of what is going on in the subtext of this entire show is that a woman has a right to her own body and to her own female agency.